Georgia. I'm the mate on the Elevator, Perry, and you asked us on Ask Us Anything about weather. So we thought we'd start a little bit about weather with the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is a very important ocean current and it affects weather all around the Atlantic Ocean. So let's talk a little bit about the Gulf Stream. So what is the Gulf Stream? The Gulf Stream is one of the most famous ocean currents in the world. It's a strong ocean current that brings warm water from the Gulf of Mexico into the North Atlantic Ocean. It extends all the way up the eastern coast of the United States and Canada. The Gulf Stream flows at a rate of almost 300 times that of the Amazon River. It moves 4 billion cubic feet of water every second. That's more than all of the rivers of the world combined. It affects weather all around the coasts of the Atlantic Ocean. So why is there a Gulf Stream at all? Let's start down at the equator. Winds blow along the northern edge of the equator all year from east to west. These are the trade winds. When the trade winds blow above the surface of the ocean, they pull the top layers of water with them, moving an excess amount of water into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. This water enters the relatively shallow areas and continues to warm as it travels back out and north, initially creating the Florida current and the Caribbean current. The other part of the water surplus moves slightly up to the north of the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, bypassing the Antilles from the north this stream is called the Antilles Current. The Gulf Stream is created by the Florida Current, the Antilles Current, and the Caribbean Current, combining off the coast of Florida into one large ocean current, the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream then moves north, almost clinging to the east coast of North America until it begins to head out into the open ocean off the northeast US and Canadian maritime regions. It then turns east toward Europe. This large turn to the east is caused by the cold Labrador Current coming down from the north which deflects it, along with the Coriolis effect. The North Atlantic Current continues to move this warm water from the Gulf Stream into the Northern European and even into the Arctic areas, including the Norwegian coastal areas. So how does the Gulf Stream affect our weather? Starting in Florida, the strong current of water influences the climate of the east coast of Florida, keeping temperatures warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer than most of the other southern or southeastern states. And during hurricane season, tropical storms and hurricanes move from the Caribbean Sea to follow the Gulf Stream to the Gulf of Mexico or the Florida Current to the east coast of the US. Because the warmer water in the Gulf Stream evaporates faster, it puts more moisture into the air, increasing the humidity of the air along the US east coast. This moisture occasionally gets sucked into a storm system and you get rain or snow over the mid-Atlantic states in New England, that good old nor'easter. Similarly, because water temperatures change much more slowly than air temperatures, when a cold air mass moves toward the coast of Canada, the coastal areas stay much warmer than further inland, again, because of the Gulf Stream. The warm ocean current tends to moderate those temperatures along the coast. Since the Gulf Stream also extends toward Europe by feeding the NAC, the North Atlantic Current or North Atlantic Drift, it warms Western European countries as well. In fact, England is about the same distance from the equator as cold regions of Canada. If it weren't for the warm water of the Gulf Stream, England would have a much colder climate. Besides affecting the weather, the Gulf Stream has also affected mariners. It's become an important tool for mariners over the years. Let's take a quick look at the history of discovery and exploration of the Gulf Stream. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun videos from the Oliver Hazard Perry. And share it with your friends! We've actually known about the Gulf Stream for more than 500 years. European discovery of the Gulf Stream dates back to 1512, the expedition of Ponce de Leon. A summary of Ponce de Leon's voyage log on April 22, 1513 actually notes a current such that although we had great wind, we could not proceed forward. But backwards, and it seems that we were proceeding well. At the end, it was known that the current was more powerful than the wind. After which, it became widely used by Spanish ships sailing from the Caribbean to Spain. Because it altered sailing patterns and shaved time off a typically long, treacherous trip, the Gulf Stream was instrumental in the colonization of the Americas. Most voyages to Virginia and southward chose the southern route across the Atlantic, even though it was 2,000 to 3,000 miles out of the way to avoid the Gulf Stream. And return voyages to Europe took advantage of at least part of the Gulf Stream to speed their journey home. Benjamin Franklin also became interested in the North Atlantic circulation patterns. In 1768, while in England, Franklin heard a curious complaint from the Colonial Board of Customs. 
why did it take British packets several weeks longer to reach New York from England than it took for an average American merchant ship to reach Newport, Rhode Island? Despite the fact that the merchant ships had to leave from London, sail down the Thames, and then the length of the English Channel before they sail across Atlantic, while the packets left from Falmouth and Cornwall, a much shorter route. Franklin asked Timothy Folger, a Nantucket Island whaling captain, for an answer. Folger explained that merchant ships routinely crossed the current, which was identified by whale behavior, measurement of the water's temperature, and changes in the water's color, while the male packet captains ran against it. Franklin had Folger sketch the path of the current on a chart of the Atlantic and add notes on how to avoid the current when sailing from England to America. Franklin then forwarded the chart to Anthony Todd, secretary of the British Post Office. Franklin's Gulf Stream chart was printed in 1768 in London. A copy of the chart was printed in Paris, 1770, and again in 1773, and another version was published by Franklin in Philadelphia in 1786. Sailors for the past 500 years have utilized the Gulf Stream to assist in their travels. Here's just some examples of pilot charts that help mariners determine wind, current, weather, based on not only where they're sailing, but when. So I hope that helped understand a little bit about our weather patterns on the east coast of the U.S. and how the Gulf Stream takes us all the way up through Canada and works its way through the North Atlantic Drift to Europe and affects weather there. And also how the Gulf Stream is used by sailors for the last 500 years. So we'll see you later on Ask Us Anything. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun videos from the Oliver Hazard Perry.